This video is sponsored by Wing Wing Technology, your ultimate fly sim hardware solution. Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're in the F5E Tiger 2 and we're doing an updated cockpit familiarization video. First of all, let's split the cockpit into sections. You can see my mouse cursor here, left console, left vertical panel, center vertical panel, right vertical panel, instrument panel, bow, and right console. Let's start on the left console. Starting at the back here, we have a series of circuit breakers, and if you want to know what each one is, then you can see they're named, and there you can pull them out. The uh, anti-G suit or button there is not modelled. Countermeasures, chaff, we can have the chaff system off, single, programmable, or multi. Uh, for these here, I've got a full countermeasures video you can go and watch, and we've got a counter there. And the same thing for flares. Sorry, I said flares, but you know what I mean. Chap there, flares there. We have flare, uh, flare dump in case of fire. Put that up and dump. We have the pitch damper on or off there. And we have the yaw damper on or off there. You will want those on. We have the rudder trim there. We have radar master mode. Do we want it off? Do we want it energized? Do we want it operational? Or do we want it in test mode? Regards the radar, the radar viewable visual range uh, on the scope. Do we want it 5 miles, 10, 20 or 40 nautical miles? Acquisition mode there. That is essentially going to lock our target. So we'd have our hand on this thing if we were manipulating the radar. That guy there is uh, not clickable. You would uh, set it up in your adjust controls. This guy here, you can um, tilt up or down the radar elevation, the antenna elevation. I should say uh, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. It's often that you would bind them in adjust controls and not use them with your mouse here. So just bear that in mind. Technically, you can bind anything on the controls, but especially those ones. Flaps. We've got a flat paddle here. Uh, we can have them in the middle, which slaves it to the thumb switch here, which we'll come back to. Or we can force them up here or force them manual down there. Regards to the throttle quadrant, this pair here. We have clickable buttons on here and sliders. Now, you, again, you would usually bind them in adjust controls to your HOTAS, but if you wanted to click them, then we have the uh, countermeasures there, uh, chaff flare button. We have speed brake there and different operations that we have. We have the controller for the flaps here. Usually, we'd simply just leave it in auto. Uh, very rare that we're actually going to override the flaps in any way. It's just how we fly. Uh, this push to talk microphone for radio transmission and caging the site that we'll come to in a bit. We've got that uh, site cage switch there. If we're going to take off, especially if we're heavy, we're going to want to extend our nose gear there to increase our angle of attack on the airfield. And a stowage box there that is not modelled. A couple of uh, miscellaneous parts here that are not modelled. Left vertical panel, otherwise known as armament panel. We've got light intensity for just this panel only. Push and drag. Fuel cutoff switches for left and right engines. Landing and taxi lights on or off. Got our engine start switches that will push and hold to uh, actually start the engines with uh, with ground power. Our sidewinder growl audio volume. Really useful to have that there actually uh, to keep it audible. We've got our emergency or alternative gear release, uh, pull and hold for that there. Next we've got the bomb ripple interval. So if we were to ripple bombs that we'll look at in a minute, that is the time in seconds between each bomb drop. Next is the bomb arm. Do we want the bombs safe? Nose fuse, nose and tail fuse or tail fuse. Next is our master arm. We will lift that up there. And we will down for camera only, off for off, and up for guns, missile, and camera. Next, our external external stores mode, or a weapon selector as I like to call it. Do we want to use bombs in a ripple, in which case we'll use these values here. Bombs on their own, safety, or rockets. Next, our pylon selectors. Here are all our pylons. If we want to use one of these pylons, like drop bombs or drop tanks, or use selective jettison, then we just flip them up. 
Next is our emergency jettison, otherwise known as Admiral's Doorbell. If we get in trouble and we need to uh, dump our saws quickly, click that, then press that there. It'll dump everything except our sidewinders for dogfight. Next, if we want to selectively jettison stuff, then we can uh, have it off or select a certain position in collaboration with these guys here. Or do all pylons, and that's going to get rid of pylons as well as stores. Then uh, we can, with either that or that or the upper selected, we can then push to actually activate the selective jettison. Next, centre lower panel. So start at the bottom and work our way up. So more circuit breakers, all labelled. We can adjust the rudder pedals here. It doesn't work, obviously, because they're not, not real rudder pedals. Uh, in terms of navigation, do we want to use radio direction finding or TACAN, tactical air navigation? Here we have the TACAN manual panel. Here shows the current station that we are attempting to tune into. We can adjust there and adjust the digits there. We can get the X-ray in Yankee with that little ring collar there. We have a test uh, there volume there because you may want to listen to the uh, the Morse code identifiers for the channel master mode do we want the TACAN system off receive only transmit and receive air to air receive only or air to air transmit and receive again this stuff's all covered in the navigation tutorial that we've done next our UHF radio in fact this is actually a UHF VHF radio it's just to operate in DCS you're going to need to cover VHF as well as UHF Master mode, do we want to off? Do we want to listen to main or use main channel? Do we want to use main channel and listen to guard, 243 megahertz? Or do we want to use it for navigation, automatic radio direction finding? Our tone signaler, this is going to transmit tone. Our volume, audio obviously. Do we want to squelch the hiss? How do we want to select our channel? Manually, preset or guard only? Guard to being 243. If it's manual, then we can change these guys here. To get the frequency, note we can use T as 1. Uh, that will represent 1 uh, for the kind of cheat mode for the VHF radio that we've got in there. If you want uh, preset frequencies, they're written on there. I know it's hard to see there, but they're written on there and they're set up in the mission editor. You can change between them with this guy here. Or you can make your own by opening him up and using the preset button there to set a preset. Right vertical panel, we start down here. Our current amount of liquid oxygen in litres on board. Whether our left generator and our right generator are on, off or reset. Our battery on or off. Movable ventilation vent. Our emergency canopy jettison in case we need to get out in a hurry. Fuel bias auto balance. So if we want to bias the taking fuel from the left or the right tank to you know, balance our centre of gravity and whatnot. Something you will do a lot. Our boost pump for the left tank, boost pump for the right tank, and whether we want to cross feed between the two or not, that is our standard configuration. If we had external tanks on, do we want to feed from the centre tanks or tank? Do we want to feed from the left and right pylon tanks? Very important to remember them. Engine de de-icer on or off. Pito de-icer or heater on or off. Our canopy defog, on or off. Regards our cabin pressure, are we? do we want to use ram dump, normal configuration, or defog only? Uh, in terms of our, uh, our uh, heater, our, our cabin temperature, automatic or manual hot or manual cold. And with manual mode selected, uh, we can choose here cold to hot. Not modelled, obviously. Temperature isn't modelled. Well, at the moment. And we have our chosen comms antenna. This doesn't work, but purely out of interest. Just DCS just doesn't model this. Do we want to use an upper antenna, lower antenna, or automatic, whichever it detects as the best? Instrument panel. Lots of stuff here. First, we've got our landing gear handle here. Up for up, down for down. Our landing gear indication lights here. Front, left, and right. And these also also pushable and testable. Downlock override. Can you do that, RC? Downlock override. So when your gear are down and there's weight on wheels, your gear handle is locked. If you take off and you're unable to raise your gear because the, the lock is still in place, you can hit your downlock override and you should be able to operate your gear handle. Roger. Uh, we've got our drag chute deployment here. We've got our flap indicator here, currently down at full as you can see. Our emergency hook 
release here. This is a release our hook in case we need to catch a wire on the uh, on the runway. Our angle of attack meter here, shown in degrees. Our speedo here in knots, and we have the ability to set a uh, variable index here at whatever we want to set it at. Our barometric altimeter here, shown. We've got hundreds, thousands, and absolute uh, altitude here. We've got the ability to choose method, uh, working method between pneumatic and electric. We can set the pressure here by turning this knob and um, we can see the pressure sitting there in inches of mercury. We have a standby ADI here, attitude direction indicator, artificial horizon. We can use this knob here to uh, adjust the, uh, the pitch trim and to cage uh, or uncage. We have the primary ADI here. Uh, we've got a knob here to adjust the pitch trim, but no cage on cage. We do have a fast direct here to align it. Here, a little hard to see, is our pitch trim shown. And um, that's going to be presumably in degrees. I'm not actually sure, but pitch trim. HSI here, horizontal situation indicator. This is our primary navigation. We will choose a point via uh, a method that we looked down up in, in our panel below earlier. And that would be the distance in miles, nautical miles, to that point of interest. And we will have uh, a currently uh, a selectable course shown here. We can select that course, that there. Also a selectable heading marker that you can see there. Uh, it's quite in-depth and we'll cover it fully in our uh, navigation tutorial on the F5. We have here a VSI vertical speed indicator shown up and down in thousands of feet per minute. Next, we've got up here the gun sight. There's not really anything to show at the moment, but we have, uh, we have the sight here. It's not a HUD, it's just a sight. On the left, we have our angle of attack index and lights. These are there to guide us onto the correct angle of attack as per our weight for a landing. Next, we have our manual your slip gauge here to show your slip. We have our, our gun sight mode selector here. Do we want off? Missile mode. Air to air guns one mode. Air to air guns two mode. Or manual mode. We have the brightness here. We can depress this pipper here in terms of milliradians by using this guy here. And you can see the milliradian depression there. And we go over this in the bombing tutorial and whatnot. Let's head down a bit. Do we want panel light on or off here? And you can't really see it because the lights are off at the moment. Uh, we've got a built-in test here. Here is the radar B-scope itself. Uh, this is all about changing the visibility of it. So the scale markers change the uh, brightness. We've got the, this is really interesting. We can adjust the pitch, uh, the horizon pitch here of the, of the antenna, uh, which is uh, a really interesting feature. Currently showing that we're 40 miles in terms of what we're viewing, in terms of distance. Our cursor, which you can't see at the moment anyway, but the uh, the uh, visibility of it, the brightness. We've got the video, uh, video intensity here. We've got our persistence. Um, it's like our delete rate of the contacts. So if you want them to delete quicker or, or not as quick, you've got that there. And we've got uh, uh, general brightness there, background. And to the right side, we have a chronometer here and a winder handle here for adjustment. We have our RWR panel here. We can power that up if we like. We can change the audio tone level and we've got a dimmer switch here. Now, I'm not going to go over all of the buttons. Just to say launch and act power don't work at the moment. Everything else does and we've got a full video on this RWR showing what all the different controls do and how to use it. Uh, mustn't forget the fire button, fire right engine warning, fire left engine warning. We've got our RWR uh, display, radar warning receiver display here, again covered in the tutorial, and we can change the intensity of the symbology. We have a um, accelerometer here showing actual and historical high and low, up to uh, plus 10G minus 5G. Master caution button here, cancelable by clicking on it. Oh look, we've got a, a contact here now, look. You see the symbology brightness. We've got utility and flight control hydraulic system pressure in thousands of PSI, utility left, flight controls right. We've got engine speed or engine RPM left and right in percent of RPM currently at idle. 
engine temperature in 100 in hundreds of degrees Celsius left and right obviously green is good amber is pushing it and red is it's going to blow up nozzle position in percent left and right fuel flow we've got two needles here left and right engines in thousands of pounds per hour we've got fuel quantity remaining left and right tanks in hundreds of pounds we've got cabin equivalent pressure in thousands of feet we've got oil pressure in psi of left and right engine two different needles again green amber red and the current status indicator of our auxiliary intake doors currently open right console first of all our oxygen so a flow meter indicator there obviously we've got our pressure our supply pressure of oxygen there we've got the supply whether we want it on or off I definitely suggest keeping that on our supply whether we want it normal oxygen so a normal ratio of oxygen or just 100% oxygen my understanding is it can help in a dogfight if you're 100% oxygen um, I don't know how true that is but that's what I've been told and uh, I've got a mode here whether we want a normal whether we want to test whoops test the mask or uh, do emergency emergency is just going to open it up to continuous supply caution indicator warning lights we'll come back to that next is our IFF panel now everything is kind of modeled in terms of you can press the buttons its functionality is not modeled yet in DCS it may do at one point but it's currently not next is our compass mode whether we want our compass to function as a directional gyro mode or magnetic mode or fast slave we think that means that usually means to slave the direct the gyro mode to the magnetic we can't find it in the manual but that's what it usually means on these next lighting cockpit interior floodlight uh, flights instrument panel engine instrument panel and consoles uh, warnings here warning lights whether we want them brighter or dimmer and our tester and let me just unhook here RC, would you love to fill us in about the uh, caution panel? Left generator means the left generator has failed or is turned off. Canopy is canopy unlocked. Right generator is generator failed or off. Utility HYD means the hydraulic pressure is under 1500 or the hydraulic fluid is overheating. Uh, spare does not implemented. Flight hydraulics means the same thing about the same as, as utility uh, pressures under 1500 or hydraulic fluid overheat. EXT tanks are empty means the external tanks are empty. IFF is not implemented. Oxygen le is oxygen level below 0.5 liters or low oxygen pressure. Fuel low means that the fuel is on either right or left is below 400 pounds. Engine anti-ice on is self-explanatory. Left fuel pressure and right fuel pressure means that the boost pump pressure is below 66.5 PSI. INS is not implemented. AOA uh, means you have an auto flap system failure. Air data computer means you have a CADC or pedo static system failure. Directional gyro not implemented. Spare not implemented. DC overload means you have a system failure in your DC system and your spare is not implemented. Thank you, RC. And we can see we have other lights illuminated. Testing. Next, exterior navigation lights. Uh, we can have off, bright, flash. Formation, brightness, lights. And exterior beacon, or off. We can test the um, fuel and oxygen gauges there. A map case there, we click on that and it opens up. Well, actually it doesn't, I thought it used to. No, it just goes to uh, knee pad instead. Left of that, open and close canopy with this guy here. Back past the map case, we have a bunch of circuit breakers, quite hard to see and get to, but they're there and function. Uh, as for the bow, we've got mirrors left and right. We've got here our standard issue E2B magnetic compass there. And we can have a light for that on or off. Regards to the seat, uh, we have the ability to go up and down there. Regards the stick, we can actually press things on here, I think. Uh, we've got that button there, which is weapons release. That button there, nose of steering. And that button there, uh, trim, up, left, down and right. But obviously, we bind them to uh, hotess commands. Finally, twizzy little vents. I can move them about. 
who let air in or out. That's, as far as I'm aware, everything. Anything you think I've missed, RC? No. I hope that was useful. I'll see you later.